Hey yo, this is Sean Paul, the girls are moving around and dancing and flossing, you don't know. What I'm saying? Footballers. 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 Seen. Seen. I'm addicted to. Footballers. Seen. I'm addicted to. Footballers. Seen. I'm addicted to you. What's my addiction? Watch on the woman, them a ball and a call out. Would you be around that salo? Music hit, girl, and she rail up and ball. How we come pick it now on ya? When we say. Controller. My girl. Controller. I'm chilling, just trying to get cleaned up for the draft tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Got an ex exciting week, man. How, how was it? It was fun. Just meeting with a bunch of teams, kind of nerve wracking, but you get used to it after a while. So. Yeah. How, was the, how was the play on the field? Uh, our team did well. I mean, me and Miles, I thought we were balling, so hopefully we do go number one and two. That would be great. Now, um, the, the coach, what did he tell you guys? Like, you know, in terms of obviously you have a lot of practice time and stuff like that. What, what was the discussion he told you before you get on the pitch? Just go out there, express yourself, have fun, show the coaches what you can do, and we're here for a reason, so. And what about position? He played the position that you wanted to play? Oh, of course. I only got to play one half of each game, but yeah. didn't hurt me, so. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now tell, where are you from? You from? Uh... Plantation, Florida. Yeah. And you grew up playing what team? Uh, I played for Plantation. My, it was my hometown club, and then I played for a team in Miami called Kendall. And then I made my way over to Akron. So I went from the heat to the cold. The heat to the cold, man. How did you deal with that? It was fun, to be honest. I prefer the cold. I like the snow. Some people say Akron has one of the best atmospheres in college soccer. How was the crowd? I mean, compared to Maryland, probably crap. But I mean, we get a lot of fans, maybe four or 5,000, so. They said Akron soccer team to get no respect on campus, though. Is that true? Of course. We get all the girls. <laughs> Everything. Ah, they love us. They respect us. Everybody comes out to the games, and they look up. people look up to us, you know. Even LeBron has come to one of our games, so. Did you feel the pressure, though, like in terms of the history Akron has, in terms of winning and titles? Not really. Not for me. I mean, I walked in there, try to give them, give the team like the most that I can give them, you know, work as hard as I can for the team, you know, I'm following the footsteps of the big players that's come through, so. What was the biggest adjustment going from uh, Kendall to Akron? Not being the star player, but I learned, and eventually I was able to become one of them. How, what about like the style of play, speed of play? Uh, Akron, Akron tries to play good soccer, so I think if you take a player from Akron and put them in a professional environment, they're going to succeed because it's like they spoil us there. We play good soccer, we follow in the footsteps of teams like Barcelona, Arsenal, and you know our coach is very, like he wants us to play soccer, not just kick the ball long. He wants us to pass teams to death if we could. So, How'd you get involved with soccer? Uh, I moved to Jamaica. I originally played basketball, so I'm a big basketball fan as well. So I probably know just as much basketball as I knew football. But when I moved to came back home to Florida after moving to Jamaica, what age did you move to Jamaica? So it was fourth grade. So maybe what eight? Okay. And how long you spent out there? Oh nine. Ah, uh, a year and a half. That must have been rough, though. The adjustment. I mean, Jamaican school is rough. So those boys are. And I know they made fun of you, the American and all that. Of course. <laughs> they call you a Yankee, Yankee boy, right? Of course. But I ain't taking that. So, I mean, I adjusted and I made a lot of friends. And actually, one of my best friends, he lived in Jamaica at the time, and he moved to America. And the first person he called was me. And we've been best friends since. And, and uh, did you play ball for your prep school in Jamaica? Yeah, I did. I wasn't very good, though, but I learned. I, got, I started to learn quickly. Not, not when I was playing ball. They just made fun of me when I would yell for the ball. Be like, here, here. Everybody's like, yeah, man, give me my ball. <laughs> but I feel like having that culture, having a Jamaican background, British and Trini background for me, it's like, that's the best. I have the best of both worlds, you know. I can live in America and I have a Caribbean background. So how did that help you gain? Definitely think that I got some attributes that I don't think the average American would have. Like I can run. That Usain Bolt in me, you know, so. Not yet the provisions I'd be eating, so. So as a Jamaican, Trinidadian, British, what's your favorite food? 
My dad cooks this thing called stew peas. Best thing to eat. I love that. And I like Jamaican beef patties a lot. What part of Jamaica were you living? Mandeville, Manchester. So I went to Bel Air Prep School. When you came back, how was that adjustment? Did you pick up? Did you have an accent? Yeah, for the most part, I can speak Jamaican or Patois. But I mean, when I went back into American school, I mean, I just was a little bit rougher, I guess you could say. I gave trouble. <laughs> But eventually I learned, so I went back to my normal ways and it was fine. So what, what was your high school like? Oh, freshman year I was quiet, but then when I started to grow into myself, then I feel like I made a lot of friends. And I've I definitely made friends that I'm still going to keep along my professional career, and people who are like true to me. So, But I liked high school. It was pretty fun. Sometimes I wish I could still be in high school, believe it or not. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about you know, the influence your father and your mother had on, on your playing career? Oh, I'll actually be honest. My mom and dad, they didn't even play soccer. They like it. Uh, they love, well, they love to watch it, but I just liked it when I went to Jamaica. And even before that, and I just started playing, and it was fun. But they always tell me, like, I mean, work hard, do what you love. I mean, they just always said, make sure the schoolwork is part of it. Definitely. Balance the schoolwork and the soccer, so. And did you accomplish that? Yeah, I did decent in college. Well in high school and college, so I got good grades. And I wanted to be an engineer originally like my dad, but obviously I'm following my, my actual dream, but. Talk a little bit about like, you know, who is harder, your mother or your father on you, in terms of, uh, on the, like, in terms of soccer and non-soccer wise? Who, what was their relationship like that with you? Well, I think anything, anything, to be honest, they're both always just like, you have to just do your best and just make sure you, you do everything right the first time, something they both say to me all the time. But my mom's, she's more on the little things. My mom, I interact with her, I would say more, but it's just about like every little thing. But you know, when I talk to my dad though, it's about advice and just, he's like the wise guy for my family and gives like the right advice. You know, my mom sometimes just chats nonsense. <laughs> do you have uh, cousins and siblings that play the game as well? My little brother plays soccer and my older brother, he loves soccer, but he didn't play, he wasn't really, good enough so but we on a weekend wake up and we watch Premier League, La Liga, everything so we just study the game, the game's all around my house. What's your favorite team in Premier League? Manchester City. I'm a big Raheem Sterling fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, do you emulate your game after him? Somewhat, not all of it. He can't shoot. <laughs> he can't shoot. He's getting better at it though. Yeah, he's starting to score a lot but nah, I like Raheem Sterling a lot. That's a question. Before you got to Akron, right? What was your most, what was your most difficult year in terms of if it's on the academy level, if it's in high school teams? Ah, uh, I'd say junior year because that's when I, re I mean, I started to realize I can actually like do something with soccer. It was freshman year, but junior year was when like a lot. That's when the academy. It was my academy year, and I would say that playing in the academy is how you get looked at by the national team and a lot of professional teams and whatever. And I was still playing in a club team, and my club was just becoming obsolete. So. I had to decide, do I go to a club uh, academy team? Do I stay with my club? But my coaches at my club team in Plantation were, I mean, they were true to me. And I mean, they took a like One coach in particular took a liking to me and he just trained me a lot and turned me into, helped me to become what I can become or what I've become. So it's like ditch that or go to a team that's just going to be better and get me more looks, but the coaching is not close to as good as what I had at home. But Now that's a tough decision a lot of kids have to make. You know, leaving your hometown team coach that, may, that you know, you're very close to and your friends you're very close to, but it's not going to maybe get you to the right level you need to get to, you know? Um, what advice you have for a kid who has to make that decision? What do you tell them? At the end of the day, follow your heart. Like, some people tell me, some of my friends still, like, that I used to play on my team, but those were, like, my best friends, but at the end of the day, they respected what I did. I ended up leaving the team for the better. And, they're still my be like my best friends, and they haven't snaked me or anything like that. So, because they know that I followed my heart, and they I did what's best for them, for myself, and it actually opened up doors for other people to step up and play. And even some of those kids on that team now are playing at some big colleges just because you know they got a chance to play. So, follow your heart, and you know your friends. If they're really your friends, they're not gonna re they're not gonna ever be upset about doing what's best for you you know, because they really care about you. So, and even today, I left those kids behind 
at my club and they're the same ones that are right here at the draft with me. They flew over here to come watch me get drafted tomorrow. So, and that's why I think of them as brothers. Let's give them a shout out, what's your names? I came out here. Uh, one of them's Lemon, the other one's Bradley, Adrian, and then of course my little brother. And then one of my other best friends, my three other friends, Andrew, Paul, and Nick, and CJ, they weren't able to make it because they had to go back to school. But, you know, I love them just as much as my other boys that are here with me. So I wish the whole family could be here, so. So how, how excited were you when getting prepared to come to the combine? Were you doing any training at home? <laughs> Corey over there was running me to death. Nah, I was in England before I came here, so it was, it was very last minute, but we decided to come, so I flew from England here. But yeah, I've just been working just for everything, national team, whether it's MLS, whether I was going to sign in Europe, just working hard. I always work hard. I try to, you know, I'm just looking for the next opportunity to grab. Let's talk about your experience over there in England. Uh, we played against Bournemouth. Bournemouth's a Premier League team, and they're U23, so it was good. I definitely think I learned some things that I feel like American coaches probably don't teach as much. But they were telling me, the one thing they told me, and I actually took it into the combine, is be confident. It doesn't matter who you're going against. A grown man, a 16-year-old boy, everybody can give you a challenge and just be confident. Just run at players, do your magic, be lively, express yourself, and that's how coaches are going to see you. What do you think you can add to a team in the MLS? Pace. I can run at players, I can beat players, but I think I'm a good goal scorer. But I'll tell you, the one thing is uh, I'm willing to suffer. I'm going to run hard. Even if I'm wheezing, I'm going to keep running, I'm going to keep running, I'm going to keep running, and I'm going to give 100% every day. So I guess you could say I'm like an energizer bunny. How is the combine, um, the test, and all that stuff? How is that? Weird. Tell us a little about the, about that process and that procedure. It's like the NFL, kind of. You do a 30-yard dash, vertical leap test, agility test, and I'm normally good at that stuff, but I did terrible. So at my 30, I ran a four flat, and people would think, oh, that's kind of good, but no, it's not. Miles over there ran a 3.88, and he's not faster than me, so. <laughs> what was the vertical? 30, 33 and a half or something like that. So I can jump, though. I can, I can almost dunk. No, I can grab the rim. Like, I'm not joking. Now, last question. You claim that you was a big-time basketball player, man. Uh, what, what position were you playing? Point guard, always. You got a handle? You got no left hand, huh? No. Nah, what? I'm not. I'm a shooter. Shooter, and I got I got the passing in me, but I have a little hesitation pull-up. That's what I got. So, Matt, question. If you can compare your basketball game to an NBA player, who would it be? Russell Westbrook, hands down. <laughs> You can go coast to coast like Russell Westbrook. Of course. And I'll keep going and keep going, yes. When I used to play at my park across the street, I'm the smallest kid on the court, and I'm still going to the hole on people. Because I can jump high, so. Corey, he said park. He said AAU. No, the park. Not AAU. I didn't play AAU. I only played in high school for a little bit. But Did you play with your high school team? Well, I mean, I would play with the boys. I didn't play on the actual team. And that's only because of soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would still cook all of them, so. Take us through the process of an interview with the best club. I mean, they just some. It depended. Some some teams were very chill. Some were very straight to the point, telling you straight up where they see you and whatever. Some, you know, like San Jose was asking me like, oh, "What do you like to do outside of soccer? Like your hobbies? How did you start playing soccer? Just to, like get to know me, you know." But like teams like Atlanta was asking me straight up questions, you know, just. Not anything about my personality, just what am I going to bring for this organization, so it just depends. So you just go in there with an open mind and make sure you say the right things. Now, do you follow MLS tight, I mean, closely? Uh, not as much as Europe, but I do watch some games. So. You ever a fan of a specific team or style of play? Uh, I mean, I, I like New York. I like Portland, how they play. I definitely like New York City SC. I like, you know... But I don't, I don't really have a necessarily a preference in the MLS, but I do just watch a few different teams, and I like how some of them play. So, so you think you're a La Liga player, a Bundesliga type player, or a Premier League type player? Probably Premier League. But why is that? I mean, Premier League, the Premier League, England is all about pace, and I mean, that's something I think I have. And I don't think I'd go to Spain and they're going to look at me and be like, oh, he's pacey. You go to England and they're saying, oh, he's pacey. You know, now, I'll be honest with you, they say that you, you're too small <coughs> for Bundesliga or even for MLS. What do you say, you say to the critics that say that about you? To the MLS or Bundesliga? I'm too small, man. 
Just give me a yeah. chance and you'll see. Has you ever had that? When I was playing when I was younger and I started getting some looks for the national team, they wanted to put me at right back because I was too small, supposedly, but I eventually am still playing forward for the national team, so I don't think height matters. I mean, the best player probably ever is small, which is Lionel Messi, and he's, I think, shorter than me, so. Now, going into Akron, how was your freshman year? Why'd you choose Akron? I mean, the way I saw it is they produced the most professional players out of any college and go somewhere where the coaching staff is known to be good at developing young players to get into the MLS. They're known to produce generation Adidas players, and I just want to follow in the footsteps of I like Darlington Nagby. I've watched him before. I even knew he went to Akron. I really liked how he was at Portland, and he's someone I look up to in the MLS, and actually I met him this year. I took a picture with him, and me and him had a nice chat, so... And I still try to s talk to him. I don't have his number. I just talked to him through Instagram, but we talk actually. So, but yeah, so I was just like, I swear I want to go. Followed the path, followed greats to Akron. What was the name of the coach at uh, Akron? Right now it's Jared Embick. So he's a very good coach. And then before, is the, before him, it's the current coach of Portland, which is Caleb Porter. So he was at Akron before he went to Portland. Yeah, but you no, I only paid for Jared Embe. Talk to us about the relationship you had with him and how he helped your game. Oh, I think definitely he showed me how to play. I used to always play like left forward where I can cut in and score goals. And he definitely like enlightened me how to use my left foot more to score and get more assists. Because that's all I did at Akron was cross the ball. And don't get me wrong, I wanted to score more, but I ended up settling and doing what he asked me to do. And it actually brought me wonders. So. Listening to the coach is a very big thing. <laughs> and being happy with your role, and that's something I le definitely learned. That I know and it's going to translate to the pros as I learn how to play my roles. What was your goal? Right there? Just to be a setup man. I didn't get to score all the goals, but hey, I got glory just getting assists, so. Are you a finisher? Ooh. Do you have to change your role in the MS? Well, that's what I always did my whole life, to score goals. So I mean, it's like going back to my number one thing. But, but if now if a team needs me to just say, run down the wing and cross the ball, I can do it. Big day tomorrow, man. It's going to be fun. My parents are very happy. I hope my mom doesn't cry. <laughs> you know she is, right? Maybe, possibly. No, I wanted to dance when I got out there. Corey told me to not do that. Not actually dance, but the kid from, the kid from Akron who got drafted last year, he dabbed. And then, Sitting on the bench. I actually want to take it off. Not the beard, but the mustache. So. Yeah, I guess please. Why'd you choose Corey Gibbs? Nah, nah, wait for it. thinking about that. Yeah. Nah, I was getting my mustache cut. Why did I choose Corey Gibbs? Hmm. That's a good question. Why did I choose Corey Gibbs? <laughs> nah, he's the best agent. I, there, I don't think there's an agent around here that can be better than him. I don't care if it's George Mendez who represents Ronaldo. I mean, to have such a good talent like Ronaldo, and you know, like you don't need to represent him. He represents himself with his talent. You know, I think coming from America, especially. I mean, I think some of us are very talented, but especially because they look down on Americans. We have to have good representation to get us out there. And, you know, and I know, honestly, I'm not even looking at what Corey's done before. It's just like, he, he, I connect with him. And it's like, I, look, I can look at him as like another dad. You know, I, I don't even really consider him my agent right now. I think of him as a mentor and someone I can look up to as a former professional player. So to be honest, like I said, it's like a dad that I pay. <laughs> but okay. well, the first time you saw me, you know, I saw Jonathan play. <laughs> it's way back, you know, funny story, right? I saw Jonathan playing way back from like my teacher Mio's days, his name was floating around, so out of respect because he was so young, I reached out to his mom first in terms of the link. And uh, he was playing in England at the time. And she just brushed me off in about five minutes. He has an agent, he's okay, don't worry about it. I was like, all right, can you at least tell him my call? Just to you know, put a reference on hometown, hometown boy, they come from the same area. Like, don't worry, I'll tell Johnny, don't worry. All up to the station, he didn't even tell you, did you? Never. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, so the second time that. around when Johnny came back and he was back at the um the friends and stuff like that playing, you know, I brought the story to him in the morning and she uh, said, Listen, everything in life comes the second time and opportunities and you know, at this point now. It's all about timing, right? Oh, it's it's all about timing. Time, I would say tech definitely I mean I went to the national team and I heard about Corey. I mean, he called me right after the national team. And I mean, I mean, once once I once I heard about him and I, I did my own research and I, I just saw that there's just good word about him. I mean, no, well, I mean, I feel like everybody in the professional world they hate agents because obviously they're always trying to get into people's business and stuff like that. But Corey and the rest of Wasserman, they even even Greg Bearhalter of Columbus Crew came up to my parents to introduce themselves and they were like, oh, he's under good representation with Richard and Corey and. You know, so it's just they have a good name to themselves, and they they don't do things that are out of hand, like that they shouldn't do. So I know that their word is trusted, and so if I'm not really performing, they can get me another shot just because they're good people and their company is well respected. And he's Jamaican. That makes it a lot better. My name is Jonathan Lewis. I'm from the University of Akron, and I am a footballer. Like controller